Welcome to It's a Crime, I'm Linda, and today we are gonna be talking a little bit deeper about Tammy Daybell. There is some new information from her daughter, Emma Daybell, and some information on an expert regarding Tammy's autopsy. Not to mention there's some more information from Julie Rowe. But before I get into it, if you'd like to be part of the It's a Crime community, please click that subscribe button below and hit that notification bell to all. Please share this video where you can and give it a like. Now, let's get into it. In the beginning of February, Tammy's results were turned over by the medical examiner. As we know, Tammy's autopsy report had not been made public, citing that it was due to an ongoing investigation. And as a quick recap, Tammy Dabel was found deceased on October 19th, 2019. She had an attempt made on her life 10 days before that on October 9th, 2019. She was 49 years old, training for a marathon and going to clogging classes. She was seemingly healthy. Chad, however, states that Tammy's heart was failing her, that she hated going to the doctors, and that she was going downhill. He also said Tammy went to bed that night before she died with a terrible cough. Well, now things are finally starting to make some headway. In a poll on my community tab on my channel, I had asked viewers what they thought about Tammy's autopsy and if they think there was something found or not. Here are the results. Out of 10,000 votes, 81% state that there must be something they found, 5% say I doubt it, and 14% say I don't know. Now, there was an expert who spoke out about Tammy's autopsy as well. His name is Joseph Scott Morgan. He is an expert death investigator. And I'll leave the link to his video in the description box below so that you can take a look at it. He talked about a few things about Tammy's autopsy. He first talked about Tammy's health and he says, and I quote, certainly somebody that you wouldn't necessarily peg as to suddenly die. He talked about Tammy and Chad's daughter, Emma, observing Tammy having pink foam coming from her mouth. Joseph called it a pink frothy cone and said that somebody might be in the throes of a congestive event and have heart or lung issues. He also mentioned the possibility of being exposed to certain agents or drugs in situations like this. And Joseph also talked about the obstacles, how it would have been obviously easier to have Tammy checked out right from the beginning, especially she's 49 years old, but in Idaho, you don't have to have an autopsy done. So he talked about the obstacles around her death. But going back to my poll in my community tab, Joseph actually addressed this because we're curious, did they find something or not? And Joseph being an expert death investigator, this is what he had to say. All other evidence is going to be gone at this point in time. So that leaves the state medical examiner, the forensic pathologist, in somewhat of a conundrum. And now we've waited. We've waited well in excess of a year for Tammy Daybell's results to come in. And they have. They have come in. The Utah state medical examiner has released these results to the prosecutor in Fremont County, Idaho. But the prosecutor and the sheriff have both said, because this is an ongoing death investigation, those results are not going to be released to the public. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us, I think at least, that they may have found something. We don't know what that is quite yet, but we do know this. If all of the normal parameters and all of the national standards had been adhered to in the death of Tammy Daybell, if just for that moment in time, the body had been examined in place, toxicology had been drawn, and maybe even an autopsy in Idaho when she first died in October 2019, we wouldn't be faced with this problem. So now Julie Rowe was on Nancy Grace and she made her opinion quite clear about Chad. We've seen her talk about him in the past. She says she believes Chad is guilty and he conspired with Lori and Alex Cox about Tammy Daybell and she said she wants justice. She said this experience has been a wake up call and it has been very painful and very real. Julie also starts talking about visions she has and she says that she actually has had visits from Tammy Daybell from Beyond the Veil. She said that 
Chad and Lori and Alex have conspired to murder Tammy with some kind of poison. So we'll see what that autopsy says. She said Chad had poisoned people in past lives, and Julie said she was poisoned in a past life by Chad as well, and she says we're dealing with a mass murderer. Now, when it comes to the nature of relationships, Julie had described Tammy and Chad's relationship as loving. She says that Chad confided in Julie, saying there's some difficulties. She said Tammy was on antidepressants. Julie said she could see there was tension, but didn't think too much about it in their relationship and thought it was loving. Now, it's interesting because Julie goes on to describe Chad as being very controlling with his kids and Tammy and stated that she had watched this go on over the course of years where she would visit and she would see this kind of behavior. She said Tammy believed in his gift and as his as did his kids and Julie believed there was brainwashing going on. She said he was using his gifts to manipulate and control by coercing and making decisions so he can receive the outcomes that he wanted for Tammy and his kids. And she uses an example like Emma not dating certain people uh, who her future husband would look like, which is not like who she's with. And we do see that in the example Chad actually gives about Tammy and Tammy's grandmother, or I should say dead grandmother, Lucille, where he gets messages from her. He said uh, in one circumstance, he took instructions from Lucille, who visits him every September 23rd, note that date, every September 23rd uh, is Lucille's birthday, and she talks to him allegedly from beyond the veil. And at one point, Lucille had told Chad to go tell Tammy to stop playing um, video games on the computer, I should say computer games. And so he relayed that information and then Tammy stopped playing them because Chad said Lucille told her to stop and that she should be working on the family history uh, and family tree. So I totally agree that he does use his gifts, so to speak, to manipulate to get what he wants. And we've also seen that when we hear about him telling Lori right when he met her how they were married multiple times in previous probations. Now, Julie was actually asked how Tammy and Chad interacted, and she said that in the living room, they would sit across, Julie would sit across from Chad and Tammy, and Chad would put his arm around her and hold Tammy's hand. What was interesting, though, Julie said that Chad wouldn't let Julie be in a room with Tammy to talk to her without Chad being there. I found that interesting. Now, Julie also talked about Emma and what she said was Emma told her that she found Tammy on the floor and foaming at the mouth. And so that's interesting as well because now there's conflicting stories, right? Chad saying he found her in bed sleeping peacefully and had passed away peacefully at six o'clock in the morning. Um, it was estimated her time of death was actually two o'clock in the morning. But Emma is saying she found her on the floor or she, yeah, she found her on the floor and foaming at the mouth. So now we're getting conflicting stories, which one's the right one? Now, Julie also talked about Emma and what she told her the day that her mom died. She said she's terrified about her dad getting married because her dad taught her about multiple probations and she's not okay with polygamy. So now let's get into Emma Daybell because Emma actually was interviewed on Court TV and she talked about how she just wants to know what the results are about her mom before the media finds out. She's saying that she was told in order to see her mom's autopsy, all of the kids, meaning Chad and Tammy's kids, would have to all go in and answer to some questions. She says, my brothers and sisters and I have been on pins and needles for over a year waiting to know what this report says. She says, but I was told that the sheriff himself cannot let my mother's own children see an autopsy report until we all meet together with a detective and answer all of their questions. She said she wouldn't be allowed to talk to anybody about the results and she says that feels funny as well. She says a detective was supposed to call but hasn't. And she says, I cannot even adequately communicate the pain that it has caused the family regarding this whole situation. 
and Tammy's parents can't see Tammy's autopsy. And there is a point in this interview, I will put the link in the description below, uh, when she was asked if she has an idea of what the autopsy says. The legal correspondent Chanley Painter says, I'm sure you have a feeling of what it says regarding the autopsy. And Emma says, I have a pretty good idea. So this is really interesting. Here we have Emma and the other four children wanting to know what's on the autopsy report. Meanwhile, her dad's in jail. So there's so much sensitive information and sensitive um, a predicament, really. She just wants to know what happened to her mom. And yet she's having to face all these things about her dad. Same with the other children and family members, really. And so they're kind of caught in the middle. Now, upcoming in March, there are two hearings and we'll see the defense trying to get a change of venue. And we are supposed to be hearing from John Pryor. He's wanting to argue for dismissal of charges for Chad Daybell. But now with Tammy's autopsy, Things just stepped up another level, don't you think? I mean, wonder what's going to happen now, right? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I still have a feeling John Pryor is going to do his best to try and get the dismissal of these charges. That's my opinion. Let me know what you think. Now, there was one more thing that was said on Nancy Grace's show that we haven't heard. And it's something that occurred the same morning that Tammy died. It was said that Chad had Tammy's funeral planned out by 10.30 a.m. that morning, just hours later. Imagine that. So let's quickly go into the timeline because I need to put these pieces together and really keep showing what is going on. It's very, very important. So let's have a quick chit chat about that. In the space of four weeks, we see this occur. October 2nd. Lori orders wedding attire and Malachite wedding rings from Amazon and charges them fraudulently to Charles Vallow's credit card. And Charles has been dead at this point for three months, just about. The same day, Chad is seen on surveillance at the storage unit, patting Lori's butt on camera. At some point before the 4th of October, Chad urges Tammy to visit her parents in Springville, Utah. Chad claims that he's been urged from ancestors beyond the veil for her to go. And well, since Tammy believes him and his gifts, she goes. October 4th, Tammy drives to see her family. And it's been stated that Chad ups Tammy's life insurance substantially before her death. It's said that he received $430,000 in that life insurance policy. October 10th, Tammy has what is believed an attempt made on her life. The gun fails. Tammy files a report with the police. Love to know what that says. Nine days later, on October 19th, Tammy dies. No autopsy was performed. She's buried three days later on the 22nd in Spring Creek, Idaho. A memorial service is held the next day in Rexburg on the 23rd. Then, two weeks after that, on November 5th, Chad marries Lori in Hawaii. Must have been just sheer coincidence that the wedding attire was ordered a week before Tammy was supposed to die the first time. And it was ordered two weeks before she actually was, and one month before the wedding took place. Right? Sheer coincidence. I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out with John Pryor, quite frankly. Notable, Chad's parents were told that Lori had no minor children and Tammy's sister was told Lori was an empty nester. Now, in a separate video, I'm going to be showing you another important aspect of October, so stay tuned for that. It will be a quick video, but an important one. There was also something that was said by Julie Rowe that I'll be exposing as well. Also watch for more deep dives. Let's have a little chit chat below. It's starting to look a little clear, isn't it? What do you think that autopsy is going to say? And what do you think is going to happen in court for that change of venue as well? I'm curious to know your thoughts. Do you think now that Tammy's autopsy is complete, do you think that Chad and Lori are going to get slapped with murder charges sooner than later? Let me know. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. He talked about how Tad and... Tad and Chammies. What is going on?